Forbidden Planet is a 1956 science fiction film directed by Fred M. Wilcox. In the 23rd century, a spaceship lands on the distant Altair IV to determine if there are any survivors of a mission to the planet 20 years prior. Commander John Adams and his men find Dr. Edward Morbius on the surface, the lone survivor of the expedition. Before the rest of the crew died, Morbius's wife gave birth to Altera, or Alta for short, named after the planet. Morbius displays incredible new technology to the visitors, including a robot and a power source under the planet unlike anything they've ever seen. This was left over from the planet's previous inhabitants, the Krell. Morbius has used one of the Krell devices to greatly enhance his intellect. Adams insists on reporting all of this to Earth, but Morbius fears that humankind having this level of advanced technology could be dangerous. Adam's crew is hunted by a mysterious invisible creature, which is revealed to be the subconscious of Morbius himself made manifest. Morbius is unable to control his mental creature and self-destructs the planet. Adam's, Alta, and the surviving crew leave the planet before it explodes. The robot is the only major piece of technology recovered. Forbidden Planet contains a lot of long, expository sequences that consist entirely of dialogue and pressing buttons. The 1950s era of sci-fi in film had not yet reached the later era of slow-paced but still exciting visions of the future mixed with action, and the even later era of fast-paced action, action, and more action. It was a different time, and a beautiful painting held more sway and was enough to satisfy audiences. Yet Forbidden Planet's pedigree is a lot more classical than one might think. Many of the events and characters from the film are loosely based on The Tempest, a play by William Shakespeare often thought to be the last one he wrote. In the play, Prospero, the former Duke of Milan, had been deposed and exiled. Now living on an island, he conjures a tempest which strands his usurpers with him. After a series of mishaps and magic spells, Prospero actually forgives his enemies resolves to destroy his magic books and staff, and begs the audience to set him free. In the film, the stand-in for Prospero is Morbius, only it is advanced science, not magic, that he possesses. Morbius, like Prospero, has a young daughter who has a romance with one of the men. Stefano and Trinculo, two drunkards from the play, are formed into this one comic relief character and Caliban, a half-monster from the island, is either the subconscious creature from the film or Robbie the Robot. I once played Caliban in a production of The Tempest, and if I may say so myself, I was terrible. Sorry, miss, I was giving myself an oil job. Anyway, the film and the play diverge so wildly that only the skeleton of Shakespeare's work remains. In The Tempest, Prospero is the central character, whereas Forbidden Planet more closely follows Commander John Adams. Also, Prospero wants his enemies to come to the island, whereas Morbius not only prefers his solitude, but wants Adams to stay away. Further, Prospero has a personal connection with those who come to the island, but Morbius and Adams are complete strangers. Modern readings of The Tempest often conjure the topic of colonialism, Prospero's capture of the island and his mistreatment of the natives have prompted critics to interpret the play as Shakespeare's thoughts on colonization. If the writers of Forbidden Planet were aware of this, naming their protagonist after an early American president may have been a reference to this. I'm not confident of that though, and it might just be an amusing coincidence. Science fiction is unlike most genres of entertainment. This is not a perfect system, but a genre can often be defined by what it is intending to provoke in the audience. A tragedy is meant to make the audience cry. A comedy is meant to make the audience laugh. Horror terrifies, and so forth. Science fiction, at least hard sci-fi, is sometimes, not always, but sometimes designed to teach. To speculate on what our future might be, what challenges we might face based on our rapidly growing technology and the progression of societal norms. Part of science fiction is prophesizing how we might use and misuse technology. 
We are presented with a world in which spaceships and ray guns are commonplace, but the other part of science fiction is a display of how we will interact with one another in the future, the interconnectivity of differing people. Star Trek, for example, utilizes both. In Forbidden Planet, the technological advancements are there, for better or worse, but the film has less interest in showing societal growth. It takes place in the 23rd century, but men still make jokes about housewives, and the spaceship is exclusively men, and exclusively white. The captain blames the only woman in the film for the advances of men because of the way she is dressed. Honestly, The Tempest is one of the most heavily criticized among Shakespeare's stories from the lens of gender, and Forbidden Planet is at least not that arcane. So, progress, I guess? Now this is obviously a sign of the times of the 1950s, nobody need remind me, but science fiction could get away with a lot more than this. There is, however, a societal concern that the film tackles, albeit indirectly, or allegorically. Forbidden Planet was made in post-World War II America, and during the nuclear arms race and Cold War. Morbius's brilliant mind accidentally created a monster. The previous inhabitants of the alien world, the Krell, had long been extinct, their technology left behind. Morbius is like Oppenheimer, one of the creators of the atomic bomb. Dangerous technology let loose upon the world. Morbius, realizing the dangers of the incredible power underneath the planet, refuses to allow Earth to have full access to it, agreeing only to portion it out bit by bit, and only governed by his own conscience. Technology as a threat was very much on the minds of Americans during the Cold War, and science fiction was a safe place to discuss the dangers of nuclear proliferation within our country without fear of being labeled a communist traitor. Forbidden Planet carefully walks the tightrope, touching upon the issue gently without speaking directly into the camera. It's true it will remind us that we are after all that God. The end to the film is not unlike The Tempest. Prospero renounces the ways of magic, realizing his error, and begs forgiveness for his attempt at revenge. Morbius renounces his own hubris and his own mistakes. Adams reminds us that humans are not gods, and Morbius comes to grip with his own flaws, the very essence of humanity, not divinity. No matter how advanced we may become technologically, we are still human with all the trappings that entails. Morbius still has human emotions. He fears, for example, what the men might do to his daughter, not to mention what they might do to the galaxy should they attain the technology of the Krell, and he becomes frightened enough that his enhanced mind manifests an unstoppable monster. One character refers to it as a monster from the id, a reference to the Freudian model of the human psyche. The id in this model is the instinctual drives, the base desires. The ego is the realistic, and the superego aims for perfection. It is not too dissimilar from the Renaissance conception of the tripartite soul, divided into vegetative, sensitive, and rational spheres, which literary critics believe are referenced in The Tempest. One could argue that within the context of the film, Morbius as he appears is the ego, and Robbie the Robot, his greatest creation, is the superego. In this regard, Forbidden Planet is less about looking into space, and more about looking into our own minds. To paraphrase a quote from a different play by Shakespeare, a fault not in our stars, but in ourselves. Thanks for watching the latest episode of Renegade Cut, everyone. If you want to support the show, you can click the orange link to my Patreon. That's how all of this happens. If you want to subscribe and never miss an episode, click on the red link. If you want to watch more, there are some recommended videos below. I'll see you next week for another episode.